Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are back out on beautiful Lake Fork in Texas and we are talking about super flukes and other soft jerk baits. We're talking about unique ways to rig them to fish them aggressively for reaction bites. Possibly even getting top water bites on these baits. This isn't about getting down on the bottom with a Carolina rig and slow fishing. You're going to enjoy this. Now, if you were with us last fall, this is not going to be new information for you. But because we're going into the post spawn into summer, we wanted to cover it again, bring it back around fresh and new and remind people that this is a style of fishing you wanna be doing this time of year. Post spawn is one of the best. Post spawn and fall are the two best times of year to be throwing this style of bait aggressively. Summertime is number three. So we're set up for the rest of the year to be fishing flukes. Now there are two different rigging styles. And again, if you've been with us before, you know what these styles are. But most people think of a fluke as a slow fishing bottom type bait. You might be using it on a Carolina rig. You might be fishing it weightless, much like we fish a Senko or other stick bait today. Or you might even be using it as a chatterbait trailer or an underspin trailer. Well, today we're talking about how to get really, really aggressive with that weightless fluke. And there are some key little changes that you can make, super subtle changes that will make the bait behave completely completely differently. It's all about hook size and placement. So again, today I want to start off talking about how to make this thing a topwater bait and then we're going to go from there. So out the gate, the rigging styles. Number one is going to be on an EWG style hook like this. Texas rigged, Tex posed on top. You fish it fast and aggressive up along the surface. I fish it much like a jerk bait, where you use a, a pop and then pause technique. Rip, 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 pause. Rip, pause. But I do it extremely hard and extremely fast. Because in the post spawn, there are two ways that I want to catch these fish. One is going to be fish that are just up and aggressively feeding. This is a great bait. After your bass spawn, the shad get up and spawn. This is a great option for the shad spawn. It's a terrific way to catch them. It's also a great way to catch those early morning topwater fish that have nothing to do with the shad spawn. It's a great way to catch bass around bluegill beds. It's a just plain a great way to catch them. So let's start with the Texas rig and we're gonna talk about the different ways to rig it. My standard setup for a Zoom Super Fluke. Now you can use any brand, it doesn't matter, but this is where my confidence lies. So I'm gonna start there. You can adapt it to whatever brand you throw. Zoom Super Fluke, that's a 4 aught Gamakatsu EWG Superline hook. The Superline is important because it means the wire is thicker, which makes it heavier. So that's the hook that's in that bait. 4 aught Superline. When I'm set up like that, Texposed here, I'm weedless, I can fish through anything. You guys might remember last fall where I was fishing through brush, catching really, really nice fish on the fluke. Set up this exact way. So set up like that, I can fish it fast on top or slower, more methodically, one to four feet below the surface of the water. And I can again catch those fish that are moved up and aggressive. I can fish in and around grass, brush, standing timber, or in the open water, you can do both. Now set up like this, I'm fairly heavy because I've got that super line hook. Now here's a quick trick for you. If you wanna start getting it deeper, check this out. All you do is change how far into the nose of the bait you go. So if you look at the super fluke, the beginning of the bait is solid material. After that, there's this gap, this cut in the belly which helps you get a better hookup ratio. So this solid material in the nose, that's what you're gonna come through to start Texas rigging. 
if I come up and go all the way through that zone and come out in the gap and then turn around and Texas rig this, that moves my hook farther back in the bait. That's going to make the bait plane out more and fish flatter, excuse me, fish flatter in the water column. It's not going to want to dive. It's going to fish flat or up high. So if I take that hook and don't use a super line and I switch to a standard wire 4 aught EWG, still the exact same hook, just thinner wire material, and I move it back in the bait like that, now I have a top water. The bait will come up and hop and pop and jump out of the water. You fish that fast cadence. Rip, rip, pause, rip, pause, rip, 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 pause. And that bait's just up there skipping and jumping unlike any other top water that you own. And the fish will just annihilate it. Now, take the same rig, take that hook. For this, we're staying with the super line, the heavier hook. Instead of going all the way through the material, I only come in a little bit, maybe a quarter inch, maybe even less than that. Slide up and leave it ideally where my hook point or my line tie is actually exposed out the nose of the bait. See that where I can actually see my knot and the tip of the hook? Same thing, set it up. I'm using the same hook but I've moved the weighting forward. Now I've got a bait that's going to want to dive. If I fish it just a little bit slower, just a little slower, I have a bait that's no longer a topwater and it will want to dig when I pop it and get some depth to it. That's how I'm gonna get down two, three, four, or even farther, five, six feet below the surface, get down to those fish that aren't willing to come up to a topwater. That just takes that bait and gives it that little bit of tip forward, and that's what makes it dive. Same bait, same hook, completely different action. Now, if you wanna throw the Magnum Fluke, the bigger one, all you have to do is upsize your hook and do the exact same thing. You wanna throw the little guys, downsize your hook, do the exact same thing. But for a, for a standard Zoom Super Fluke or a standard, Bass Assassin or Caffeine Shad or any of those, 4 aught EWG Superline is my starting place. Now, the other rigging style is to take that bait, put a screw lock in the nose, take a screw lock, that's an owner CPS spring, you screw it down into the nose of the bait. all the way into the nose until it's just inside the material and the screw lock is not showing like that. The screw lock's fully inside the bait and instead of using a Texas rig hook, I use a finesse wide gap hook and I stab through the nose, through the material and through the eye of that CPS spring. Now I have a bait it is extremely erratic, extremely aggressive, moves so well. Think banjo minnow. I literally call this my banjo minnow rigging. This bait fish this way is even more erratic, is even more darty because now the entire bait can flex. You don't have a hook right in the middle of the bait that's making half of the bait stay rigid. The entire bait can move and flex and twist and cut through the water. It gets even more erratic and aggressive. The other benefit of this style is that I can go to lighter line because I'm using a one aught finesse wide gap hook. I can drop all the way down to six to eight pound line, meaning if I want, I can even throw it on a light spinning reel. It's a great way to let a kid fish the bait it's also a great way for you to get those bites in clear water. Now, two other modifications. One, they make a weedless version of this hook. It's gonna make your life a lot easier because you can start throwing it in and around cover. Number two, some companies make these little pieces of plastic that are like a bobber stop, 
but their purpose is to slide over this and keep that bait from sliding off. Because if you work it just wrong or a fish comes up and thrashes it really hard, this can fly off, you have to start over. But if you put that little keeper on there, and again, we'll link everything down in the video description, just like always, put a little keeper on there, that's gonna help hold it in place where you still have all that free movement, but it doesn't come flying off when a fish is coming up and thrashing it. Now, how is the hookup ratio set up like this? Amazing. As good or better than the EWG style. So why go EWG? Because I can use heavier tackle, I'm ultra weedless, I can fish it over, under, and through anything, and when I hook a big one, I can haul them out. Why go nose hook? I can drop down my line size, I can get finessier, and I get an amazing hookup ratio. You will find, if you try this, that bass are actually eating your fluke 90% of the time or more head first. That's why the hookup ratio is so good. They come in and they eat this guy, you set the hook and you stick them. Almost every fish will be hooked deep in the roof of the mouth on that finesse hook. On a standard hook, they can be hooked anywhere because they take it all the way in and then you set and that hook has to turn and catch. So they might be hooked in the corners, they might be hooked in the top, they might be hooked in the bottom. They're hooked all over the place. Almost every time you hook up on the nose hook, it's all the way back in the roof of the mouth. Amazing hookup ratio. Now color wise, again, I'm out here on Lake Fork. I'm a long ways from home. I only brought three colors to fish all over the country. You can adapt as needed, but I kept it very simple. This is called smoke and shad, but essentially it's a ghost type color. It's very clear. It's very minnow. That's, that's what it says to me. It's smoke and shad, but it looks like a shad. It looks like a thousand other bait fish. Number two is albino. Albino is more of a solid white type color. It's actually a white pearl color with a little bit of a blue or violet top on it, but essentially it's a white. Number three is Houdini, which is like a gold and watermelon type color. What are they for? I've got a clear water color, I've got an all around do everything color, and I've got a bass are eating bluegill, perch, or some other bold fish color. That's it. Three colors, two basic styles to rig them, and then I just adjust my hooks from there to fine tune it. I'm fishing this on a 7-2 medium heavy, fast gear ratio, either a 7 to 1 or an 8 to 1. Because you, again, you're up on the surface working hard and fast fishing this bait. You're not slow fishing. This is not that traditional fluke fishing. This is aggressive. So a 7 to 1 or an 8 to 1, medium heavy rod, unless I'm hooking big ones and thick cover, then go to a heavy rod. You can also drop down all the way into a medium type or a medium light spinning rod if you're going with the really small hooks. And then I like to fish braid to leader. So this is 40 pound braid to a 15 pound leader to absorb that shock and so those bass don't see that braid. That setup works up works really well. That braid, when you snap braid, you get really crisp, sharp movements out of that bait. You wanna be moving and then dead stop. Move, dead stop, move, stop. You don't want to move and then pull it through the water and then move. You want sharp, crisp, aggressive movements. Braid really helps make that happen. But you can do this on fluorocarbon. You just need to snap that rod tip even more crisply. Is that a word, crisply? Very sharp, hard snaps is what you're gonna need to do. It works. You can do this right now post-spawn for those fish that are guarding fry, those males that stay up in the shallows and the cover and guard the fry balls as they hatch. Those fish come unglued for a fluke. You can do this all the way through the summer and on into the fall. Guys, I hope this video helps you. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.